Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome to FAIR TV. Media are turning their attention back to the Iraq War with the news that Al-Qaeda-affiliated fighters have taken control of the city of Fallujah. This has caused media to recall the history of that war, but only part of it. Many stories have tallied the precise number of American troops who died in Fallujah and are wondering if that was all in vain. There are troubling developments in a part of Iraq where more than 1,300 Americans fought and died. After a decade of U.S.-led war to plant democracy in Iraq, much of Fallujah has now fallen to Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda's takeover of Fallujah brings back bitter memories for Americans. It was here in 2004 that U.S. Marines fought a ferocious house-to-house -house battle against Iraqi insurgents. More than 100 Marines gave their lives to pacify this city, and hundreds more were injured. Well, that is, of course, one part of the Fallujah story, what it meant for U.S. soldiers. But the other part of the Fallujah story is quite different. That city was the subject of a massive U.S. siege and invasion in 2004 which included the use of cluster bombs and white phosphorus weapons. Hundreds of civilians were killed there. According to some accounts, most of the buildings in the city were destroyed. There are continuing investigations into the massive public health effects of the U.S. attacks there. Corporate media can recall certain aspects of the Iraq War very clearly, but as their memory of Fallujah shows, they can choose to ignore other parts of the war entirely. You probably heard there were a few days of extreme cold as a polar vortex moved across half the country. That made news, obviously, but it also led CNN's Crossfire to show to wonder if it meant it was time to cool off the global warming debate. That's how the show's announcement put it, and it went on. This week's historic cold brings out the skeptics. Will it put the climate change debate in the deep freeze? Now, climate change deniers can say whatever they want, whenever they want. It's CNN's decision to put them on television that is most troubling. But there they were, presenting a discussion of climate change that was perfectly balanced, in the bad way. Left host Van Jones and a representative of the League of Conservation Voters on one side, while right-wing host Newt Gingrich and a Heritage Foundation climate denier were sitting there floating bogus notions about a pause in global warming. Every time there's an adverse event, you run over and you say, oh, see, look, this is just what we expect with global warming. Well, you know what? The global warming says, oh, this is consistent with our models, and this one's good. They have a zillion models that can explain everything except the lack of warming in the past 15 years. That's not true, and some of the climate deniers' other statements, frankly, didn't make a lot of sense either. But that's sort of the point of the fossil fuel-funded climate denial industry to gobble up the limited amount of time corporate media devote to climate change to suggestions that there isn't a climate crisis at all. As Naveen Nayak of the League of Conservation Voters put it on Crossfire, We may be the last four people that are having this debate. That's exactly the point of climate denial. They succeed when outlets like CNN give them equal billing in this so-called debate. And finally, many progressive-leaning Democrats are enthusiastic about New York Mayor Bill de Blasio. And the turn to the left in New York City is generating national media attention. I think a lot of liberals thinking this is the sign of a resurgent left. We're going to get into that on the roundtable. So who was on the roundtable to discuss this resurgent left? Well, there was neocon pundit Bill Kristol, along with Republican strategist Anna Navarro. No surprise, they weren't impressed with Bill de Blasio. Then we had two middle-of-the-road political reporters, Koki Roberts and BuzzFeed's Ben Smith. He said the inauguration ceremony was too left-wing, while Koki Roberts made this point. That this notion that there's this resurgence of liberalism, there's a difference between populism and liberalism. And uh, the liberalism, you know, we, we never see a poll that shows more than about 20% of Americans identifying themselves as liberal. Now, there was one left-of-center guest, populist Democrat Brian Schweitzer. You'd think maybe he would vouch for de Blasio. Not exactly. But the point is, you're a mayor, Buster. You got to make sure exactly. the snow gets plowed. Absolutely. You got to make sure the garbage gets picked up. That's you got to right. make sure the bad guys get locked up. So that right there was the outnumbered left-of-center voice on a panel devoted to discussing whether or not there was a resurgent left. There goes that liberal media again. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.